Hi, I'm Liam, and you're watching a Project Falcon Punch video. I haven't said that for a while. That sounded weird hearing that, actually. <laughs> um, so today, I'm here with Dan. Hello. And we're going to be running through Dan's top five games of 2016. So, yeah. Dan, do you want to get started? Do we get, are we going to have a bit of preamble, or are you just going to dive right in? I have, like, a top four, I guess, and mm. then the fifth one is, like, a mixture of about four different games. I couldn't decide on which one. Uh-huh. Another feeling. Yeah, I ended up basically just going with the game that I played a lot of, I guess. Yeah. Maybe not necessarily enjoyed as much as another game I could have put here, but uh, that game is The Division. Oh. Uh, some people might find that a bit of a surprise because I know most people, in retrospect, see that game in a bit of a negative light. Yeah, yeah. The tide kind of turned against that one. Yeah, but for me, I played that within the first month of it coming out and um, I actually forgot how much I enjoyed playing that with... I played with a couple of friends and we just went through the entire story. Yeah, it, look, it looks like a lot of fun to do like a co-op thing of, but I, d- yeah, I never definitely. I never picked it up. There's like some really uh, really interesting side story missions in terms of like the plot because if anyone's not aware you can probably see on screen right now it's it's New York but like a post-apocalyptic New York and the setting is really really interesting it's like around Christmas time so it's always snowy and uh, there's no people on the streets it's not zombies it's just everyone's been infected by a virus so basically a bunch of people are dead. If you're playing with friends you might miss a lot of the sort of the very interesting story elements of it because any multiplayer game you're going to be playing you're just going to be destroying dudes and not really caring about what you're oh, I'm shooting this guy with the red marker okay yeah. yeah sure but like there's some other little cool these little um, these holograms you can go through and you can see like events that occur people that are arguing or, or, or like scared about like pre-virus outbreak mm-hmm. it's just really interesting of a setting to be honest I, I played a lot of Destiny and this game gets a lot of comparisons to it rightly so because it does play very similar to it even the menus are very similar right as much as I love the uh, combat of Destiny maybe more than the Division I feel like the, the driving force and you wanting to actually find out and explore that New York is so much more interesting like this is one city in one season and it's more interesting than a game that's about four planets yeah I, I didn't really play Destiny either but uh, yeah it's you a, didn't it, miss much it, uh, it sounds cool it sounds interesting I kind of regret not jumping on the bandwagon while it was the hot thing you know isn't there meant to be like a film with Jake Gyllenhaal or something I can just wait for that because <laughs> yeah, it worked out so well for him last time he did a Ubisoft game, oh yeah so. yeah yeah, I remember that. I don't know. The Division's a really cool setting. I'll be honest, I think actually it could work as a film because unlike games where like, oh, let's do a film about The Last of Us. It's like, well, The Last of Us is fine as a, as a game. Uh. It's a game, first and foremost, I don't think it should really be a film. This has so much like cool lore that they've put into the backstory of this game that it could uh-huh. actually be expanded upon, I think, in a film, which I, I think it could be interesting, but that's only if it's done well, which it probably won't be. Anyway, um, for number four, I've got Deus Ex Mankind Divided. Another one I haven't played, so I've got, I can add nothing thing too but you you go you go ahead <laughs> i don't know if you played the last one the uh, human revolution that came out i played a few hours of it but i'm not a big dsx person to be perfectly honest with you that was the first game i played was human revolution and right. to be honest that was um one of my favorite games of that year which i think was 2011 i just like thought that the the variety in terms of what you do in that game was just um like in, in terms of like mission structure was was uh, was fantastic mm-hmm. the only problem with it was the most notorious thing about that game is the bosses are shit right because yeah. they, they weren't designed with like various gameplay styles at all so uh, I remember hearing that this game they got around that by just basically emitting bosses altogether, uh-huh. which sounds like a, a shit way to get around that but to be honest it works it doesn't uh-huh. mess up the flow of the game and I think that um, it's just a really cool game you're essentially like a Batman Robocop I love just stealthing around and just uh, just hacking stuff it just makes you feel like such a really like when you upgrade some of your augments to you can now hack turrets so I mean you could go pacifist run I was trying that at the beginning of the game then I just gave up because I was getting spotted too much but uh-huh. it's just so satisfying to hack a turret to take control of the turret and it just to kill everyone in sight and then you just walk into the room like on skate and it's just like it, there's some really satisfying moments like mm-hmm. that, that uh, probably the worst thing about this game is the story I don't know if you've heard much about a uh, game story but no uh, no I haven't you, you kind of like get set up with three different plot points and only one of them gets solved and then it's like come back next time sort of thing oh, that's, like, that kind of sucks yeah and it's like this is clearly uh, the second of a trilogy of uh-huh. like Adam Jensen games but um, the, the setting itself is in Prague and it's a, it's a futuristic Prague it's there's a lot more uh, verticality to the level design than there was in the last game that's cool 
I would strongly recommend anyone mm. playing that game if they haven't played Deus Ex before, or if they have, if they enjoyed the last one. Like it's it's more of the last one. Like uh, the division, there seems to be like a lot of retrospective negativity about Deus Ex. Yeah, I would agree with that. But it seems like the people who like it really like it. Uh, like mm. there are some people who really got into it. Yeah, I, and I definitely did. I feel like it's one of those things where I would, yeah, I almost walked my mind thinking that I didn't enjoy it, and then I went back to record a bunch of footage of the division and of Deus Ex, and I was like, no, I did really enjoy this game. It's mm-hmm. just because since then people have come out with some of the not the positive parts of it, which yeah, I, I think it is justified. But um, I still enjoyed my time, and I, st- I still would recommend Deus Ex because I think it's a, still a really fantastic game. All right, number three then. Uh, number three, I have got Battlefield One. Oh, another one I haven't played. <laughs> <laughs> um, I feel like this year has been a great year for shooters. I think that's pretty much yeah, like yeah, it has. First person yeah. shooters in general, and I think that everyone has their online shooter of the year whether it be uh, Overwatch which I've only briefly played uh, mm. Titanfall 2 again I've only briefly played the uh, multiplayer for that mm. uh, but for me the one that I've just gravitated towards in terms of a first person uh, competitive shooter is Battlefield 1 for me mm. it's the most fun I've had in online shooter since probably Bad Company 2 that came out in like 2011 or whatever it was oh, yeah. long time or 2010 ago. yeah and I think the cool thing about this game is that uh, it's, it's obviously it's set in, in World War 1 which yeah uh, the setting does look really cool yeah and again I've been playing this game with like three other friends which is you go around in a squad and if you play any Battlefield game in with three other friends online you work together you go as three different uh, uh-huh. or four different uh, classes and you can own the, the entire map in terms of <laughs> just killing everyone because mm-hmm. one's reviving one's giving you ammo one's giving you the long range sniper one's give, destroying tanks you know and when you go around in a squad it re- you really like you depend on each other when one of you goes down you're like oh fuck I just really like um, evokes teamwork more than any other game I've really played in a long time I kind of actually fell off with Battlefield for a while like I played Battlefield 3 and 4 and the one that came out last year Hardline which was a bit naff like, yeah, I haven't really properly enjoyed a Battlefield for a while the single player I think is actually really really solid and Isn't easily it? the best Battlefield uh, campaign I played the Battlefield 4 and I saw the campaign that was shite to be honest yes yeah. Uh, so is it better than that yeah oh yeah it's miles better than that like most Battlefield campaigns have been shit Battlefield has always been about multiplayer so I'm not mm-hmm. really going to go into campaign too much but it's really cool how there's like five different like vignettes like stories that you play as these different characters sure. in these different locations around, the, the, around Europe and they all have their own like unique arc or aspects like one of them you're like in, you're a squad in a, in a tank it's pretty enjoyable uh, the best one is definitely the aviator mission when you're in this plane and the whole setup is that you're an American that is lying to be a British pilot I might try it the, the setting it looks interesting the intro mission as well is like essentially a battlefield and every time you die it comes up saying date of birth and the time of death ah. and it swaps over to someone else and now you're playing in a completely different area huh. and it's really interesting the, it, the way that it handles like sort of uh, death in, in, a, in such like a poignant war like that but um, mm. uh, for me it's easily the most fun I've had in a campaign uh, not a campaign sorry uh, a multiplayer for like a good number of years that's cool Yeah. moving on to number two and I know that you can talk about this game because we discussed it in your video is Inside ah right yeah I forgot about Inside yeah of course Inside's one of those games where I enjoyed so much playing the way through then I got to the final area and I was like this is fucking insane and then the ending happened and I was left like what I kind of at the time felt wanting more not necessarily in a good way I think that's intentional I think exactly and then the the more I mulled over it in my head and sort of like looked up theories and stuff the more I was just like no actually this this game like yeah it's it's so clever I remember uh, someone over we were both like what the fuck is this and then it just kind of ends and and I was like is that it is uh uh, is there gonna be more you move the analog stick like can I keep moving (laughs) yeah yeah exactly but I think it's intentionally meant to be kind of slightly unsatisfying in a kind of a darkly way yeah. and I appreciated that especially like you after I'd thought about it a bit I thought it's hard to really talk about it without going full on spoilers but given how dark the story goes it's that's what you meant to get out of it that it's it's not meant to be a satisfying happy story the whole game mm. isn't and I think it's a fitting ending and it works 
I, I took my Xbox around a friend's house and we were playing like I think a bit of Rocket League or something. Mm-hmm. And uh, well, I know my friend doesn't really play that many games. And I just said, "Oh, play this game. It's called it's called Inside. It's like it's like a two D sort of platformer thing, uh-huh. um, but it's just really really cool art style." And he was hooked. I mean, he played through the entire thing. And like I said, he's oh, not even awesome. really like a in quotations a gamer, but he really enjoyed what he played. And I just because it was like the second time he watching uh, the playthrough of it uh-huh. after my own. I then just like grew this massive ever out of appreciation for the, just the way that it's designed, just each level, every. Thing yeah, is, exactly. Every part of that game is so unique and memorable, like in terms of the way it plays, the way like it looks. I just, mm-hmm. um, I, I just think it's a, it's a fantastic game. Yeah. I think it's a testament to how well designed and how clearly things are marked in the levels and how it conveys mm. messages to the player by how easy it was for someone who's not a big of a game, as you say, to just get into it and be able to play it like that. Probably, yeah. d- I, I imagine, doesn't play a lot of 2D side scrollers and that kind of thing, but you know, it, no. I think there is an accessibility about it for somebody yeah. to dive in and some of the puzzles get a little bit difficult but they're never restricted to the controls because it's always yeah. simple in how it controls yeah I thought it was a, a terrifically designed game and I agree with you I'm going to move on to my number one pick and sure. I feel kind of similar to the way that you described your number five pick is I kind of feel a bit shallow in picking this especially as my number one right but it is Uncharted for a Thief's End oh but there's nothing wrong with it no shame in it <laughs> I think it's just because I love I just love that game so much yeah. the storytelling and its characters is just so like well interwoven it's I love The Last of Us as well and to be honest I've enjoyed Naughty Dog games like for years and I don't know necessarily if it's their best game but I still probably prefer The Last of Us but uh, I think the reason why I took, like I say I feel like a bit shallow picking this is because it's just like it's it's just this pulpy sort of action flick uh-huh. into a game that just on the surface doesn't have that much depth I guess but there's so many just like memorable moments in that game that I know that you said you've not played it but I'm sure you're probably aware of maybe like just how Uncharted is all about set pieces yeah yeah I've seen videos and it does look very cool and if I could play one game that I haven't this year it would yeah. probably be Uncharted but I just you know don't have access to a PS4 at the moment I think that the game is still accessible enough for anyone who's never played an Uncharted game before uh-huh. but I do think that you're going to get way more enjoyment out of it if you've been with the series like from the beginning because uh-huh, yeah. it has so many callbacks and uh, at the beginning of the game he's like living the regular life he's got a regular job he's not adventuring and then you go up in the loft in his house which is uh-huh. I've, I've, heard, I've heard about this yeah yeah and it's an early moment so I, just, I feel like it's not too big of a spoilery moment yeah, but go for it. the music kicks in like it's very subtle like the Uncharted theme kicks in and it's just like he starts sifting through all his, uh, his uh, memories about the last few games essentially then he pulls out this like nerf gun and you start shooting and these targets and stuff and like, he's pretending he's in the firefight again and like <laughs> um, and then it follows up with actually the probably the, the one of the coolest moments where you're playing Crash Bandicoot ah yeah I think I've heard about that as well the way that like Elena his wife now do you want to play this and he like picks up the controller and it's the PS1 controller and you're like oh, wait what <laughs> she cuts to the TV and it's like the Playstation startup music and I'm like no they're not are they they're not actually going to do it and then you're playing the like one of the levels of Crash. <laughs> Again, I feel shallow because it's this is just like it's pandering at the biggest level. Yeah. But it just puts such a massive smile on your face. Yeah, yeah. I don't even want to really touch the ending, but the ending itself was just like fantastic. And yeah, I think it was a perfect way to cap off the entire series. Um, yeah. I feel left out <laughs> as an Xbox player. I intend to get a PS4 at some point, and I just haven't gotten yeah. around to it. The multiplayer is fine. It's probably the best actually of the Uncharted games, but I've never really got into the Uncharted. You don't sure. play Uncharted for to play multiplayer. Play. It's the same reason why you don't play like Titanfall to play. Well, actually, the Titanfall campaigns actually. Oh, sorry, a Battlefield. Then you don't <laughs> play Battlefield game for the campaign, and you play it for the multiplayer. It's like reversing for Uncharted. Yeah, we can't see Titanfall anymore. <laughs> Yeah, I know. I just thought that. I was like, wait, no, the second one's actually really good. <laughs> yeah. It actually has a campaign this time. Uh-huh. But I mean, yeah, anyway, that's it for me, I guess. All right, cool. Thanks for uh, for joining and uh, like listening to me gush about my favourite games, even though that you've not played most of them. Yeah, no problem. It was, it's been fun. It's been, it's been educational. Thanks again, Liam. No problem.